Daruyana diagram. So let me tell you how, what is Daruyana diagram. So it's a graphical tool. It's a graph basically, which is going to depict two things, two things that is happening in the extracellular fluid compartment, intracellular fluid compartment. What are the two, two things it's going to assess? It's going to assess the osmolality because fluid means it has only two things. One is osmolality, second is volume. So it's going to assess these two things. So if, if you see this graph, the x-axis is going to be the volume of the fluid compartment where the outside is divided, it, the outside compartment is divided into extracellular and inside is intracellular. If you see this is forming two-thirds and this is forming one-thirds as we discussed earlier. And here is the tonicity, okay, or the osmolality of these fluids. Now, let us um, start with one one condition each. Think the patient is having isotonic fluid loss. That is, the tonicity does not change. See, any question on Darwin and di diagram, I'll tell you simple steps to decode. Okay. First, look at what has happened to the ECF volume. Okay. See, only three things you are going to assess here. First, ECF volume. Second is what is happening to the ECF osmolality. And third thing, ICF, you are going to check only the volume. You are not going to check osmolality. Why? Because osmolality is supposed to be equal between two, these two things. So, whatever ECF volume is, I, I mean ECF osmolality is, ICF osmolality also becomes that. Okay, that's the basic simple principle that osmolality is same between both compartments. So, you don't have to check the fourth thing. ICF, you just have to check the volume. ECF, you have to check the volume and osmolality. Simple. Now, isotonic fluid loss like blood loss could be there or GI fluid loss could be there. Think the tone is normal but some amount of fluid is removed from the extracellular compartment. So, here you are seeing, one second. So, here you are seeing that the extracellular fluid volume has reduced. Normally, it is this much, extracellular fluid volume is reduced. But since the tonicity is not reduced, there is not going to be any change in ICF. ICF changes only when tonicity changes between ECF and ICF. <coughs> now, next coming to isotonic fluid gain, that is ECF has gained extra, but tonicity is normal. So, here, uh, let me just fill this. ECF volume reduces, ECF osmolality is normal, ICF os volume is normal or unchanged. Now, call it normal, you can call it unchanged. Okay. Now, next what we are going to see is, ECF volume is increased. It is isotonic fluid gain. Fluid gain is happening in the extracellular fluid. Tonicity is normal. So, ECF osmolality is unchanged. ICF volume is unchanged. We are going to see this with IV normal saline infusion. Next is hypertonic fluid loss. Okay. So, first let us come to the part where fluid is lost. Correct. So, you will draw a graph here. Now, it is hypertonic. That means all the solutes from the body is lost because the urine is hypertonic, you think. Like for example, you are using a diuretic. So, all the solutes from the body is lost. So, the urine becomes hypertonic and because of which the blood tonicity reduces because all the solutes are going away in the urine, correct? So, ECF tone also reduces and ECF volume reduces. Now, ICF wants to reduce its tone, okay? This has become hypotonic. Now, ICF wants to reduce its tone. How does something reduce its tonicity or osmolality or concentration by adding something to it and making it more dilute? So, what is ECF going to do? What is ICF going to do? It is going to pull water from already dehydrated ECF and then it is going to increase its, its volume so that the uh, fluid becomes more diluted and it becomes hypotonic, the tonicity becomes hypotonic, clear. So, hypertonic fluid loss, loss your example is diuretic <coughs> and what is happening to the ECF volume, it is reducing, what is happening to the ECF osmolality, it is reducing, what is happening to ICF volume, it is increasing, clear, okay. Now, let us come to the next chart which is hypertonic fluid gain. So, first thing is fluid gain is happening, so we shifted ECF outside. Next is it is hypertonic, that is you are acquiring something with a very high solute level. So, the tonicity of ECF is going to increase. Okay, so, this is what is going to happen to the ECF. The volume is going to increase, the tonicity is going to increase. Now, what will ICF do? ICF also should increase its concentration. 
to increase its concentration what should it do to increase its tonicity what should it do it should lose fluid so that it becomes hypertonic okay so it has lost fluid and it has come inside so what is happening here ecf volume increases in hypertonic fluid gain because you're gaining fluid ecf osmolality also increases but to increase the icf vol in icf osmolality icf volume is going to reduce pretty simple this is seen in 3% saline infusion. <coughs> now next is hypotonic fluid loss. So fluid loss has already occurred. So you know ECF is going to shrink. Correct? Now what are you? It is hypotonic loss. That means the solute is going to be less concentrated. Correct? The, that is hypotonic fluid. Like lot of water is lost. Like in conditions like diabetes, insipidus. So what is going to happen? Because lot of water is lost, the tonicity is going to increase. Because remember, in diabetes, insipidus, you are going to see hypernatremia because lot of free water is getting excreted from the kidney. So the, so the tone increases and also the in extracellular fluid shrinking is there. Now what will ICF do here? ICF also has to increase its tone so it is going to lose its fluid. So ECF volume is going to reduce, ECF osmolality will increase, ICF volume also will reduce. Pretty simple. Now coming to the last section which is hypotonic fluid gain. <coughs> here what are you going to see? Already they have told you are going to see fluid gain and it is hypotonic so osmolality is going to reduce. Now ECF has to, ICF has to reduce its osmolality so what will it do? More fluid it will take in so that its solute concentration be becomes reduced and osmolality becomes reduced. So from where can it take more water? It can take only from ECF that is why here you see increase but tonicity is reduced. So basically all these things this is based on the principle that solute is not allowed to transfer whereas water is allowed to transfer okay it's as simple as that so this could be confusing but many potential questions will come so please go through it again <coughs>